All right, so speaking of pathogens, um, the third side of the disease triangle, how do you manage the pathogen and manage disease? So I may not have mentioned that disease and the pathogen and infection are two different things. Infection can occur, but disease, which is a symptom, can appear later. So when we talk about infection, sometimes infection will occur during bloom, but disease symptoms may not occur until ripening, for instance. So when, we were, when we're talking about manipulating the pathogen, we're keeping that in, infection from occurring so that we don't see those symptoms later. So what are those pathogens? Fungi, which are the most common of the, um, of the plant pathogenic um, microbes, water molds, and those are the phytophthoras. I'm gonna to touch on that later. Bacteria, we have a couple of bacteria that affect, um, that affect blueberry. Viruses and nematodes, not a lot of nematode damage here. So how do we manipulate a pathogen? We can start by excluding it. Don't bring it in in the first place. Bring in clean plants. Know those plants that you're bringing in. I have an example. Last year we did this program here in, uh, I think, in Pulaski County. And there was someone here that asked about making sure he didn't get infected plants. He was about to put in, I think it was like 2,000 plants. So he said, what do I do? How do I know that I'm getting clean plants? And he wasn't going through an index an indexing program. So I told him, I said, I don't know, buy five random plants from the supplier, have them tested, and then make your decision after that. So by the time we got to Pulaski County, he reappears at a second meeting. And so out of the five plants, the, the uh, diagnostic report came back. He had three with Phytophthora root rot and two with blueberry rust. So five out of the five plants that he picked randomly were infected. So what if he would have bought 2,000 of those and put them in the ground? So think about those kinds of things. Don't bring them in in the first place, and you don't really have that disease pressure. So uh, bringing in disease-free plants, making sure those roots are healthy. We've had a lot of Phytophthora root rot problems here, especially in this part of the state. Pop that plant out of the, out of the container, look at those roots. You want to see healthy roots. If you're not sure, have it tested. But uh, just because the leaves look good doesn't mean infection hasn't taken place. So don't be afraid to look at those roots. Uh, make sure there's no damage at all, not to the roots, not to the, um, not to the stems, not to any part of the plant. If you question it, walk away until later or ask for help. Also preventing splash. Some of our pathogens are soil-borne pathogens and they splash up. So by using things like mulch, you're preventing that splash. You're preventing moving soil-borne pathogens into the canopy. Sanitation, you've heard that a couple of times today already. Sanitation means just being clean, clean picking. Clean, pick everything, pick the good and the bad and take them out of there. Don't let them fall to the ground. All right, so don't, don't, let, don't let those spores blow back up and infect healthy tissue. And then we have the concept of a green bridge. A green bridge simply means another type of plant that can be infected and be that stepping stone from one row to the next. A lot of times we're talking about weeds, other crops we can talk about volunteers, but a green bridge is kind of that stepping stone. So keep everything clean in terms of weeds. Um, and then weeds themselves can be reservoirs for viruses, for instance. Some insects, uh, they can be reservoirs for some insects that vector viruses uh, as well and some bacteria. So, so really manage weeds um, in, in an effort to, uh, as a part of your uh, disease management program. And then there are mummies. Mummies are simply little hard fruit, those that have hardened, and that's where a lot of fruit rotting pathogens overwinter. We don't have a lot of problems with mummy berry here. I think I've only seen it once. I've been here in Kentucky for four years. I think I've only seen it once. It's not something we worry about a lot, but uh, fruit mummies of any kind, I don't care what kind of fruit you grow or vegetables. Um, so you're getting out the rotten stuff on the vine, on the plant, and on the ground. But once those little mummies harden, don't look away. Those are just as serious in terms of overwintering as the mushy stuff. And then there are cankers. Cankers are simply a stem lesion. All right, so it's the equivalent of a leaf spot, except it's on the stem. Uh, this one isn't showing up real good, but any kind of cracking, any kind of sunken lesions, 
Cankers come in all forms. Blueberry are kind of tough because blueberry kind of have that mottled look on the, on the uh, canes anyway. So sometimes it can be a little bit confusing and you may not be sure. If you're not, you can use a knife and you can, you can kind of slide it through. Make sure the cambium underneath is nice and healthy. If you're not sure, ask for help. That's why we're here. Talk to your county agent. If your county agent isn't sure, he, can send, he or she can send it to the uh, plant disease diagnostic lab and we can help out there. So um, don't bring cankers in, don't buy cankers. All right, you're paying enough for these plants, you should not be buying disease. So examine every single plant. I don't care how many you're buying, examine every one. Make sure you're coming in with clean stock. But if in any case you do have a disease problem, then we're switching gears and uh, eradication is the goal. It's never really what happens. We can try to manage, but we can never control. But that effort to eradicate and get it out. So when there are cankers, we're pruning them out, not throwing them on the ground because sporulation by fungal, in a fungal canker, fungal diseases, those pathogens sporulate in that canker. So if you cut it and throw it down, sporulation still occurs and spores can blow back up into healthy canopies. So getting rid of dead, dying, and diseased wood right away anytime you see it using a good clean pruning cut all right no twisting no no um, no ragged edges good good pruners that are maintained and that are sharpened not left in the weather um, and in my case my son used to cut wire with them when he would find them we all have those people at our house right so keep your pruners they're yours hide them hoard them um, because because that's really going to make a difference in your maintenance program all right, in terms of debris, I just said that. Don't ever throw debris on the ground, all right? Prune right into a cart, because sometimes, like if we're pruning like a tip light, we're cutting pretty small pieces. That's hard to get back up off of the ground. So prune right into a cart. It is, it is more labor, but trust me, you will be happy you did it in the long run. So any kind of cuttings, if you have a small planting, leaf spotting, path, leaf spotting diseases, raking up those leaves and taking them out, makes a really big difference. And then there are the tools that you actually prune with. All right, so cleaning your tools, uh, a Lysol concentrate for small growers if you're not using a, a commercial sanitizer, uh, really good, especially for viruses and bacterial diseases. All right, cleaning pruners between each and every cut. That's hard, but if you have disease, you don't want to spread it. Also soil. Pathogens can move around in soil, especially those, the soil-borne pathogens, not just the Phytophthora's, but those that overwinter in debris. So our shoes, we can move around soil and those, those pathogens with our shoes, with our clothes, sometimes if we have cuffs on the bottoms of our jeans. So think about that as, we move, as you move from a, maybe an infested or infected area of your planting to another. So work those on different days or work the healthy, the healthy side first before you move on. Don't ever walk or don't ever let the you pickers move from an infected part of the, uh, the orchard into a clean part of the orchard because it can definitely move. And when I say soil, not just soil under your shoes, soil on your tractor implements, soil in um, containers, washing containers in between. If you're, not, if you're gonna reuse containers, make sure you wash them and make sure you bleach them. So really important, really important to not move pathogens from one end to the other. All right, and sometimes we just have to rogue a plant. Sometimes we have to rotate out of a crop altogether. I know there are Phytophthora root rot epidemics here that really that grower has just lost that property to blueberries anyway. So sometimes rotating into something that is less susceptible or not really susceptible to Phytophthora root rot. That's an example. So sometimes we just have to cut our losses. This is a crown gall, which is a bacterial, a soil borne bacterial pathogen. Um, so this, this pathogen in particular, sometimes once it's infected, it's not curable. Sometimes we just have to pull that plant up and get it out of there before it spreads to others. I just want to say though, that in terms of cultural practices, those always come first, then come fungicides. Fungicides are always your last consideration for a blueberry because again, they are a low input crop. Um, prevention, though, is key with, with plant disease management. 
We, uh, we don't have curative fungicides. They're all preventatives. So uh, if there is a high risk for any disease, a preventative program will have to be put into place. Um, so the right fungicide for the right disease and to do it early enough. All right, and if you're not real sure what disease you have, again, we have the Plant Disease Diagnostic Lab, and you will access that through your county agent's office. There is no charge.